people recognize my work when they see it and and I guess it's a sort of innate design sense that you know just a, it's picture proportions and and design sense and and thematically I kind of have always been sort of figurative so I guess you know it take all those and and, and roll them together and, and, and people you know it sort of starts defining who you are as an artist I've started out as a graphic designer. I always knew I was going to do an, be an artist. I never really questioned that. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. <laughs> and started doing film work. I did a lot of scenic work, just did my own work. And eventually we just started doing more galleries and just doing art shows and gallery work and things like that. So it's just something that's always just sort of growing and little paths open up all the time. Most of my work, I have now kind of gotten to a system where I enjoy when I make a puzzle for myself. You put a, a pa weird pattern against an image and then you've got this sort of chaos that you have to reorganize into some kind of cohesive design. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just come up with, I've got this weird thing over here and I'll think, well, what if I put these things together? What happens? It's sort of like an experiment. Then your mind has to kind of, you know, figure out if it's possible to make something, you know, edit it out to make them live together. Over the last maybe 10 years, I've I've gone through this idea where originally I started with wood panels and then I would put an image on top of it and then I wanted the wood grain to come through and so I thought, well, now I need to learn how to paint transparently and I have to kind of make this, I want this to live with it. And then from there I started other kinds of patterns. I started working on metal, I worked on um, wood assemblage, I make like a mosaic of old found wood and do images. I've done collages where I've taken print and then and then again you put the image on top and you do it transparently enough that both things can live simultaneously. I had this idea that I wanted to start maybe incorporating text or some other kind of pattern behind an image and um, my original idea was I, have this, I found this book and it was a, um, a, from the 1930s, a book of the New York Times newspaper. And so I started making little collages out of that old yellow newspaper because I love the color and I liked, you know, that was old. And, and I started doing paintings on top of that. Decided I'd make these little tiny collages, maybe four by five inches, have them blown up and then collage those down and then do the imagery on top of those. And so that's what this is now. And then, so that's, what, you know, another variation in that sort of juxtaposing image and pattern. A lot of times I just invent the faces. Um, on these, I've kind of been looking some images just because I like, I want them to be sort of lost, a lot of shadow, I, want, I wanted a lot of deep shadow areas so that the blacks would edit out the text. So a lot of them, maybe it's just a half a face or part of a face or, but, or there's usually a lot of darks in them. So then, so wanting to have a lot more sort of um, that kind of a composition, I started looking at more at photos and stuff so I get like a lot more accuracy with the shadowing. I have a few ongoing themes. I don't really think of it when I'm doing it, but I kind of go to them. Like I, I always kind of have like these weird circus and parade kind of themes a lot of times because I like the um, world that leads me into it. It leads me into a world of, 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 of weirdness and, and oddities and, and, and things like that and disproportion and, and, it, and where I want to be. So that theme actually helps me keep it from coming too um, conservative and, and, and too, you know, I just like that world. So a lot of times that'll go that way. And the sculptures, I kind of enjoy ran the, the poetry that happens when you take disconcerting things and you put them against each other. It makes its own little world. It's like taking two words that don't have any meaning, you know, like and you put them together, like those magnetic boards, you know, and you just put these randomized words together and you create this kind of weird poetry. That's the exciting part about that is you really don't know what you're going to get. McRae was sort of um, launched I don't know, almost 20 years ago. We had, a, um, there was a group of artists that had gotten us some studio space in Orlando that and they had like four or five of them and they had a back of a building and they were kind of concerned that the front of it, the whole building was going to be rented. So they kind of put out there like, you know, there's some good space here, you know, if you guys, other people are interested um, in renting it. And so there was a group of us, a lot of people from Creality Art School and from other from people that all of a sudden started saying, well, you know, I could use this space, I could use this space. So we started seeing how many people that, you know, there was, because it was a pretty big space. and. Um, there was enough of us that we thought we could get, maybe get it started, and, and my folks, um, uh, George and Marty Whipple, they, they started it. And as far as backing it, going to get the loan, and, and sort of 
you know, giving it the, the, the first, you know, little boost along the way. A lot of people have helped out and, and taken over the reins, you know, since then. They're not even in the studio anymore. And in fact, I think I'm like the only one from the beginning is still here. But, you know, we have photographers and painters and we have uh, ceramics and, and, and when you really go down the line, we have, a, you know, a lot of different medias. But, but yeah, I think we culturally we add, you know, this nice thing. We, we're, um, I mean, we're independent, but we, we love associating ourselves with the city and, and doing projects with them and getting involved whenever we can. And um, I just think that it, in other cities, you know, where, you know, big studios become like little centerpieces for arts districts. And, um, and, I, and I think that overall, I think when people go into, come into Winter Park as, as a cultural destination, you know, they're looking for interesting things, you know, places to go. And, you know, I know when I go to another city, that's what I look for. I look for, you know, where are the artists?